five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. All right, so we are doing a special session called Meet the Coaches. So we've got women's hoops coaches. You want to introduce yourself real quick? Yeah, I'm Coach Briley Palmer. And I'm Coach Kerry Shepard. Now, Briley, what, how many years have you been head coach now? This is my fourth year. Four? I kept thinking it was three, but time just like... Time just keeps going. It flies yeah. by. COVID was my first one, so oh, was, yeah, I was really blessed right. to have that as, as a first year head coach. And and that, um, what, we, we pushed back the season and only played so many games and it was all in the spring and yeah, very different. That's probably why that doesn't feel like your first year. I don't know. Yeah. I kept thinking it was three, but it's four. Yep. This is the fourth. So what's different starting? Let's let's skip the COVID year. Yeah. So let's say, what, 21 season? Mm-hmm. So your first, like, legit season versus the start of number four, what are some of the differences you've... Oh, I mean, probably just in general recruiting, um, my recruiting style and uh, maybe what I thought of you know, uh, who I wanted and, and how I wanted to run the program. Um, I think I've really figured it out here recently and, and the type of kids that we're getting in here and, uh, ones that can really build this program on and off the court. So I think just, just seeing that. And of course me, I mean, you get the head coaching job after being an assistant and you're like, do I even know anything? You know? So (laughs) I think that just learning in general, the game and, and all that stuff's been, um, of course, you know, has gotten better. That's experience tells all. So yeah, sure. No, it's there's uh, imposter syndrome mm-hmm. sometimes kicks in or the Dunning Kruger yeah effect. Yeah, <laughs> uh, that happens. That happens to me with a lot of things. Like I'll do it for a long time, and then I get these like moments of doubt. Yeah, it's like what am I? Do I even know what I'm? What's happening? Yeah. And then you're on the inclined yeah. to to realizing that hey I'm not I'm not a complete idiot like yeah. I can it's always in the, those down times like you say like it's never you know as soon as practice and the lights come on or games and the lights come on and like it there's no doubt it's this is where I should be and all that stuff but it's just you know the preparation up to it that should we do this did we do this last you know all those questions and things like that but um it's it's the right feel when it's game time or practice time and and I'm, I'm confident in that, so I, I love what I do. Uh, Carrie, uh, where are you coming to us from? What's your sort of origin story? So um, I'm originally from still Missouri in the Boot Hill. Um, went to Mizzou for two years, transferred, went to SEMO, finished there. Um, so I finished the COVID year and then went overseas, played uh, professionally in Ireland. Uh, came back to Cape Girardeau, um, worked for the city, just doing a lot of skill training with basketball, coaching, helping, doing that type of stuff. Um, and then, so this is my first big girl job, so first year as an assistant, and I'm um, just happy to be here. Cool. Uh, that's quite a um, – so you, you're originally from the Boot Heel. Yeah. And uh, Mizzou and SEMO, so you're definitely a Missouri kind of person and then you were you overseas for two years you said? just one just one yep. year, one season playing in Ireland yep. um what was that experience like um <laughs> well it's it was a great experience especially small town girl first time out of the country um kind of a culture shock but I was blessed to be around good people um good. I feel like God has always surrounded me by good people so I never really freak out about new stuff but um it was nice it uh really put in my mind and let me know that we're a little soft over here when it comes to physicality. Um, like those girls over there, they're fit. Um, they play rugby, they play Gaelic football, like they play those type of sports. Um, but it also made me appreciate my style of play, um, the skill set that we emphasize over here in America. Um, but even to this day, like I still talk to all my teammates from there, um, all my coaches from there. Um, we're trying to plan a time for me to come visit just to hang out. So um, it was a really, really great experience. Really, cool. really great. That's awesome. What was your uh, team name? So we were uh, Glenmire. That's UCC Glenmire. Okay. And um, we were based out of Cork. 
Oh, okay, Cork. All right. I've I've not been. Um, I've heard it's really cool over there, but you should uh, go. And my, when you look at the grass, it is real. I touched it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, my sister was there many years ago, and I've known other people, and they said it's it's just the grass and the is really cliff. Cool. The wind, though, can be a bit of an issue. It rains. Basically, it literally <laughs> rained. Even when the forecast said it wasn't going to rain, it would rain. It would rain. Anyway, it would rain. Um. <clears throat> So you, when you came back to Cape, you were teaching like skills yep. camps or. Yep. So I did. Um, I used. I would do one-on-one skill training, uh, group skill training. I even worked with some of like the local travel teams there, um, just just teaching them, like how to play the game, how to take care of those fundamentals, but mainly just like how to work as a team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how it is in high school. You know you got everybody telling you how great you are, what you should be doing. And I have to come in and be the be the bad guys. Like, okay, it's decent, but it could be better if you work at this like this. Um, so many people, you know, focus on oh, you gotta do the work, but it's also how you do the work. Right. And so it's like teaching those teaching those kids things that I had to learn early, just because of where I come from and the goals that I set for myself. Um, but just tell, like teaching them, there's no shortcuts, and what you get out of it is what you're gonna put into it. So, great. So how did you link up with Carrie? How did you, how did she end up on the staff? Yeah, no, she, it's kind of a funny story because I tried to get her to Mac as when I was an assistant for Coach Cook. Oh, um, okay. And not only once, but I think <laughs> twice or maybe three times. So um, I finally got her. It wasn't as a player, but as an assistant. So years that's, later. Years later, it yeah. Um, but no, she was, you know, South Pemscott in high school and a really good player and we had mutual friends and things, so I would always try to put, you know, our name out there just in case, you know, sure. she wanted to go junior college, you know, she had a place here, and um, then, she, of course, she went to Mizzou, and um, then I heard she was possibly leaving, so then I was trying to see if she wanted to come to, you know, Pestering us be Pestering her the, again. <laughs> yeah, and then, um, yeah, then she went to SEMO and, and had an awesome career there, and, um, you know, actually, the her – she calls him like her dad but um chuck was the one that called this summer and or actually the spring and i really didn't have a spot yet but i knew that um you know coach sprinkle was going to be leaving because he was taking a teaching job and stuff but it wasn't official yet so um he kind of called before that and i was like if she can just wait like or if she's really interested you know have her reach out and um she did so we we lucked into that and it, she's just been a breath of fresh air and uh, knowledge for these girls and you know we're not that far apart in age um, but she of course is closer to the girls sure. um, in age so that helps with you know relating to them and kind of doing those things that I you know I'd rather distance myself from <laughs> <laughs> that she can handle so that's it's nice and it's nice to have a female yeah for sure yeah um, no that's funny it you kind of forget you feel young Mm -hmm. until you're around yeah 18 years and then it's like oh no I'm not yeah I'm an I'm an old person now yeah that's I feel that way a lot too especially with the things I don't know and the um you know the slangs and the tiktoks and all the stuff and so yeah I I feel you um speaking of uh well, somewhat related. Um, we've had a lot of players who've gone on to success playing overseas. Um, I see that sometimes on uh, social media, we'll mm-hmm. highlight someone. Um, we have a couple. Now we get we have a couple of players from Australia this season mm-hmm. again, four. Yeah. four, and then we've also had graduates uh, end up playing in Australia among other places. Are there any recent uh, graduates who've, who have uh, right. gotten on a team, states or otherwise? Yeah, um, I mean, right now we have girls, um, Raisa from my, what, second year, she's playing at Wichita State. Um, nice. Quincy Erickson was on that team, she's at Drury now. Um, Nyjah Moore, she's at Williams Baptist. Um, Mariah Stewart, she's at Louisiana Lafayette, um, and I think 
uh, we were talking about this the other day. But then you've got like Holly Forbes, who's working out here, um, trying to get a pro contract back in Australia. She was in Adelaide and she played on a pro team last year. Um, Haley Winters playing overseas. Taylor Corrigan's playing overseas. Um, so a long list of, of girls still, you know, playing ball. And, you know, the ones here, of course, finishing out their bachelors and right. um, doing a great job. Now we have, so four uh, from Australia. Mm -hmm. Now, do those tend to come from like the same, is it, a, do we have a connection with a coach or a school or is it just completely random? Like how do we mm -hmm. connect with? Yeah, it's pretty random now. I feel like we do have a service that we go through um, with Taylor Jones and, um, but it's, it's a lot of former players that uh, are playing and they might run into somebody that's looking to come over um, here and they just recommend us. I know that it's a small world because one of our former players, Chelsea Roberts, um, was at a like a, a girls' sleepover or something um, in in Melbourne. This was two two summers ago, and it ends up being her sister, the girl that she was hanging out with. Her little sister had a friend over as well, and this friend was. Um, Audra, who we have now. Okay. So just like crazy things like that. And, you know, a, a lot of the parents that um, are over there that have had girls play for us, you know, they really help with um, pushing our name if, if they know of people that are looking to come over. And so I, I kind of like it that way because then you, you have a good um, thread of information that about these players even though they're not here and you haven't truly met them in person or seen them play in person but they kind of know what we like already because their daughters played for us and then they can kind of go from there so it, it's been good but we don't know we don't have really a certain thing that comes every year from the same place gotcha. and this year we have a New Zealand um, with Jayla as well so that's and that was definitely from a former player um, that knew word of mouth mm -hmm. and good yeah so yeah, it's neat. Very small world. Now we are currently five and zero. Oh. Yep. Mm -hmm. Is that right? <clears throat> What's the outlook as far as? I mean, I don't know if you've had a chance to see what other teams in the conference are doing, or um, I mean, the goal obviously is to get to the national tournament. Um, how are you feeling so far about what you've seen with with the team? I mean, um, some of the wins are a little more lopsided, but it's usually mm -hmm. the closer ones that kind of maybe show you a little bit more about uh, what they've, uh, yeah. what they're all about. What, what's your outlook for the season? Yeah, I mean, I think yeah, the national tournament. You, our girls have been asked all season by different people, like what, what's your goals, all that stuff, and yeah, it's to win the region, of course. But we're just trying to take it one game at a time with these girls and. Um, where we've got some depth and try to, you know, talk to them more. I know Coach Shep talks to them about really um, working each other hard and, and going against each other in practice and how pushing one another is only going to make us better. And then also it kind of lets the coaches know, too, like what we do have. Um, and right now, you know, we have three or four that, that show it – every day in practice and you don't you don't question it you know we got shooters you know that they're good rebound you know you know those things but um you know about six of them that we're kind of like we you and her are about the same you know mm -hmm. like until you guys really go at each other and and really get down to it so we need that kind of competitiveness i'd say to kind of step up uh before i mean i think that we're capable and and really i mean our region's always um, in there every game on the roads tough and mm -hmm. every game playing against somebody at their home is you know it, it's just been a competitive battle in the region 16 so you got to take it game by game and understand that you know injuries happen and it's such a long season so you can't really you've just got to keep your focus you know short-lived and and game by game now uh coach Shep are you are you the bad cop are you, the, um, are you the good cop? I, 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 I follow whatever my we're leader. Both. Yeah, You're whatever. We're it both. depends on what my leader is, okay. and then <laughs> whatever, whatever she is with it. I always, she always knows I support her, have her back. Um, but I'm also gonna love on them as well. So as much as I scream at you while you're on your court, I always tell them, hey. 
you know, go get your teammates and then come see me. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, we're, we're yelling at you, but we're also going to tell you how to fix it. And, like, we're just really focused on ourselves right now, and that's our daily habits. Are we competing every day? You know, and I think as long as we're focusing on ourselves, especially right now, when we're not in conference play or region play, it's only the better. Like you play different types of teams, so you get to figure out who we're going to be in the heat of the moment. And the good thing about it is like we have every day to work on that and practice that and figure that out. So, what are you like during games? Are you uh, are you tense? Are you relaxed? Or um, I'd say before the game, I'm probably more hyped than the girls are. Yeah, <laughs> it's game day. It's game yeah. day. Um, and then during the game, I'm just very like locked in on the details. Just business. Yeah, yeah. and. I mean, that's why I sound like this right now. Cause, yeah, the voice is good. Yeah, because it's, it's a lot of yelling, but also it's just like um, making sure like I'm reading her as well, reading coach as well. Um, do we I, do we need to change anything? Who's locked in? Okay, who needs a breather? Like I, like all those little things so she can focus on the game. Right. And then once those suggestions are made, she can easily make whatever decision that it is. Um, so like during the game, I'm, I'm pretty relaxed. Um, I'm very engaged. Um, very few things pass by me um, while I'm watching the game and coaching through the game. So I just, I'm just very, I'm very locked in, very locked in. Is it harder not being able to play, like not being a player? And this, obviously, uh, Coach Palmer can answer this too as as former players. Is it uh, sometimes when you're on the court? Like you're not really nervous mm-hmm. because you're sort of in the moment. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but maybe if you're on the sideline, that inability to <laughs> to be out there is that tough or? Well, um, I, I wouldn't. Not for me personally because I know they're not me. Um, the way they play, the way they think, they're, they're not Kerry Shepard, and I don't expect them to be. So for me, I I try to figure them out. It's like, what? Okay, why did you make that decision? And what did you see? And then I bridge that with what I know and what I saw. And then we find that like, hey, okay, this is what you see. I understand that, but this is the look. So I, like, I don't ever get like, oh, I wish it was me. If anything, I wish I was just out there to have their backs. Yeah. Sure. Like, I, I'm very. We talk about that a lot too. That very protective. Yeah, and they're, um, you know, we'll get mad sometimes like they think it's hard being them like that that's the easy part being able to just control yourself and all you have to worry about is playing hard and doing those things where we've you know we've got to be in charge of making sure they're ready to go Mm -hmm. and all 14 you know all 14 15 how many ever you have and um that's the hard part it was easy to play because you know you just had to play hard you had to play hard and do those things but trying to get all 14 15 to play hard sometimes and and do everything how we want it in this perfect little <laughs> deal. Like, I mean, it's it's tough, but um, yeah, Coach Shep does a good job with them as far as trying to get why they read. I, I, I sometimes, I think, go like, no, there's no way you read that that way. You know, yeah, I'm just sure, like, that. Sure. there's no way you thought that way because you wouldn't have done that, you know, <clears> or whatever. <throat> but she's good about talking to them, the whys and things like that, but. Well, depending on when people might be listening, um, this is probably going to come out Tuesday morning, November 14th. And so the night of the 14th is the first, uh, well, you you had a, a game last mm-hmm. week. Yeah. Um, but Tuesday evening, the 14th of November, women's games at 5, men's games at 7. So this is our first sort of doubleheader evening. Um, now, if you... You can check the schedule um, for the entire season on the Max Athletic website. Um, kind of not a ton of games um, in November, December, just a, just a couple, uh, a lot in January. So if you're looking to um, come out for especially a women's game because you got tonight, and I don't think you guys have another home game until the 24th. Thanksgiving tournament, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, early on in the season, limited um, gay, or chances to come out and see the women's team play. Um, I know the men have a tournament um, in the weekend, but depending on when you're listening to this, if it's uh, the day of November 14th, come out for the 5 o'clock tip for women's and uh, 7 o'clock for men's. Um, 
I appreciate you uh, you all coming on. We just wanted to kind of get to know the coaching staff. Uh, obviously, now year four, a yeah. lot of community and, – and having come been a player and – and assistant coach for for a lot of years um but it's good to talk to coach Shepard um obviously best of luck this year throughout the season hopefully we'll get some players in talk about how things are going and get to know them a little bit better um yeah they they really (laughs) like to talk when it's not you know on the court on the court (laughs) (laughs) yeah we joke with them all the time about that now we've uh, we used to do this years ago, and we're starting back up again. And it's always been a good time to get to know the players and uh, their backstories and their um, how they're doing at Mac and all that kind of thing. So yeah. Uh, anyway, thanks again, and Thank uh, hopefully we'll talk to you all uh, throughout the season. Yeah, and I'd like to um, you know send out prayers to we, our former player Josie Yunt, which used to be Josie Long, but um, her mom passed away. Um, over the weekend and and arrangements are going on for that so we just want to send out prayers for her family and and what they're going through and um she never missed a game and and was just like a, i mean just energy all over and you could tell Josie when her mom walked in the games was just a different um thing to see and and we're really um sending prayers back and and talking to coach cuck and stuff today so it's it's a sad deal but we're always you know supporting yeah. Um, our our girls when they leave and and their families so yeah prayers go out to the long family yeah absolutely um it's always a delicate balance um if you're someone who maybe isn't super super close to the family um i always kind of like to wait because there's a there's always such a rush of mm-hmm. um uh outpouring and communication early on but it's over the long term when things start to fade. So if, if you are uh, connected to the family whatsoever, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Try to do what you can to reach out to them, um, you know, when, when you feel the time is right. But that's, yeah, it's certainly unfortunate to hear. So uh, the best to our family. Yeah. Um, so uh, anyway, again, hopefully we'll talk to you all and, uh, throughout the season. Best of luck tomorrow or well it's monday but uh when you're listening to this yeah. tuesday evening best of luck in that home thank game. you wear your red right yep. it's a red, red out wear your red <clears throat> red out so wear red we'll get to welcome gh his first home game you know officially so that's neat yeah we're uh actually i'm having the men's coaches come in and we're gonna uh, talk to them a little bit so uh yeah first home game for the brand new men's team so a lot of exciting reasons plus at 3 30 uh, I think they're going to start the tailgate. So if oh. you come by, you can get uh, – they usually do hot dogs and burgers and stuff. Um, so a little bit before the women's tip, if you come out early, you get a, get something to eat at the uh, tailgate. So plenty of reasons to come out on a Tuesday evening. So hopefully we'll see everybody there and wear your red, and we will uh, talk to you all next time. Yep. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.